Yes. All right, the next item on the agenda is strategic priorities. Okay, thank you. Just a brief introduction here. Um, so in the proposed budget for police, we have three strategic priorities that are being funded. One is a police department reorganization, uh, which is for community policing, uh, training, which is for officer development and state standards, and then strategic cameras, which is for police response and crime prevention. Each of these items is very important to move our department forward. Before we go to item number five on our agenda where the finance director will talk about numbers, I'm gonna turn it over to Acting Chief Niver to discuss these three priorities in more detail and answer any questions that you may have. In addition, uh, he will talk about the Building Bridges Program since that was raised by Council Member Woods several weeks ago. Acting Chief Niver. Sorry, we're going to pull up our organizational charts. It's the same thing. Okay. I apologize. Let's see the top up there. Mm -hmm. Current. Yeah. Right about that. To the left. Two more. Okay. Yeah, right there. Right here? No, above. See the top toolbar. Yeah. I just can't. My face didn't end up. So I can't see it. There you go. Sorry. Okay, there we go. My goodness. All right. Okay, this is our current organizational charts for our police department for the past 10 years, uh, about six, seven years. Um, a lot of these positions have been eliminated, especially the commander of Bureau Support Services who retired. As you can see, it's it's kind of cluttered and, and disorganized. And so we have a different vision that we're going to propose tonight. Uh, you can see traffic officers are here. We don't have a traffic officer at this time. So I just want to give you all an idea of what our current organizational chart is. Right now, I am a lieutenant and the acting chief, and the other lieutenant is Lieutenant John LeClaire here. And it's just us as the commanders, which has been for the past several years. So John and I have been running the department and all these organizations in this manner that's currently have it. And I'll go to propose. Which is this one, yes? Correct. And this is what we are proposing. We're proposing to add a um, assistant chief, which would be a, or a title would be a major. And as you can see to the left here on my screen, we'll have a lieutenant of Bureau of Field Operations. who will have a designated will be the patrol division. And to the right, we'll have a lieutenant of Bureau of Investigations. We'll be in charge of the detectives and a new unit. We want to create a community resource officer unit where we'll have a supervisor. You see that okay it it is they can see it on if they're looking on there it's okay that one that's the one. sorry yes yeah they have a copy all right so the goals of our reorganization is to increase greater accountability for our agency and what we're going to be doing is we'd be eliminating a detective sergeant we'd have three detectives and then we'd be adding three community resource officers. And one of those community resource officers spots would be a supervisor or corporal position. So the goal, like I said, is greater accountability. We want to address community needs and further promote our community involvement. We need an overall better customer service this will provide. Provides more efficient and effective delivery of police services. And we're going to add, as I mentioned before, an additional command additional commander which we are deficient in at this time with just two of us as commanders and let's let's propose if we just if we have two lieutenants and we have to um conduct an internal affairs investigation while the commanders will have an extra layer in between so the major would conduct an administrative internal affairs investigation on one of the two commanders 
And if a major position, if there was an internal affairs investigation, the chief of police would then conduct that and so on. So it gives us a layer, as you can see here. And then lastly, you know, creates opportunities for advancement for officers. You know, the officers will want to achieve goals and will have more positions. When you're a smaller agency, there's not much room for growth and development. This will add officers, you know, motivation for officers to achieve these goals, attend specialized training to maybe for one of these promotions or one of these special assignments as a detective or a community resource officer. So we're gonna have to create more opportunities for officers. Just a clarification, um, we're not adding any personnel to achieve. That. No, we're not adding any personnel. We are shifting uh, positions around to create this. So we are not adding any additional police officers. We will stay our same 33 commission police officers, including the chief. <laughs> so each each division, as you can see, as I explained, lieutenant over a bureau of investigations, he'll be an internal affairs investigator. Will analyze crime statistics. He or she will analyze crime statistics and determine trends, and then they will manage all the case management and case follow-up and follow-up investigations. In addition to being in charge of the community resource officer unit to address the community needs and social needs, and the lieutenant or patrol self-explanatory will command the patrol division. They can work with patrol officers, and the main purpose of this is to develop and guide our supervisors. Right now, we do not have we do not have the ability with all the additional duties that we have to address, you know, and you know, develop our supervisors at this time. So that'll be the patrol lieutenant's main mission there. Um, in addition, I'm sorry, with the assistant chief, another role that the assistant chief will have, we are getting more and more sunshine requests. We're getting three or four a week now for our body cameras, uh, different investigations, and it takes an average of three to four hours for one of us to address that. And right now, Lieutenant LeClaire and I are the only ones that can address those requests, court order requests, whether they're expungements or sunshine requests. And it takes easily four hours, each one of us to do these per, per matter. And then finally, Community Resource Officer Division. These are all gonna be bicycle certified officers, so they'll be on bicycle patrol. Um, we're looking to increase community policing initiatives. They're going to be addressing social issues such as unhoused, mental health, food insuff insufficient. They'll be attending specialized training in, in all these areas. And they'll be working closely with our community health uh, liaison. And they'll be responsible for the coordination and preparation of community events. And also, as you can see here, we've eliminated the code enforcement position. Our community resource officers will address any violations with residents or the businesses. And it's what's to the mission here is to resolve matters of the code violations. So these officers would best suit that for the community to resolve the matter and work with the businesses or residents if there are any code violations for that. And not to mention they'll be out on bicycle, so they'll have more opportunity to uh, closely see any issues there. And with the community resource officer position, there will we'll be pushing our police building bridges program. Um, I provided pamphlets here. We do have this on our website. Um, the best way to explain this program, it, it's been a slow start, but it, it's it's a way to meet with those with uh, mental health needs uh, prior to any police contact. We want to set up a support system. Thanks. Yeah. We want to set up a support system, meet with the family, meet with the individual himself or herself or they self on that, and with our mental um, health liaison, uh, Chris Bevin on that. Uh, I can give a, a personal example. I have a, I had a family member with a, a mental health issue. And when I became a police officer, the uniform was very terrifying to my family member. And it took many, many contacts with my grandmother and, and family member to familiarize himself with who I am, was and what I represent. And so with that being said, if we had this program, and this is the goal of this, if we could have met with somebody like my family member and his mother in a non-police situation with our mental health liaison and just kind of all work together. Because when we respond to a call for service, it's very, everybody's very, you know, it's very agitated, you know, uh, escalations are high and the communication is, you know, is difficult there. So if we have something in place, 
we will know what hospital this individual, we'll know the doctor, we'll know the family member, we'll have all this information for the officer responding. And if there's any trigger per se, you know, uh, my family member hated when, you know, we, I touched my face or something like that. Uh, he thought I was hurting myself. So little things like that is the goal of this police building bridges. I hope that kind of explained the mission of this. It will be really promoting this in our crisis intervention officers will be more, you know, promoting this program and getting more people involved. Uh, and then the next thing is the uh, training matter. Uh, I appreciate the council's increase in the budget last year. It was very, very helpful. We were addressing many training needs. All of our officers are now crisis intervention team certified with the exception of our new hire. So we're able to have every officer now is CIT certified. Um, we were able to attend additional mental health training. We added some uh, training instructors for de-escalation, defensive tactics and firearms. Uh, we attended field sobriety training for all the officers. And uh, we also were able to do the fentanyl and opiate training, safety training, not only for the public, but for our officers themselves. And lastly, we were able to address also wellness programs. So the goals for this year's training budget is going to be basically the same. I want, we want more de-escalation training. We want to try to attend that three, three times a year where we have uh, access to a simulator over at Webster Groves. Uh, officer wellness, we still want to strive to officer wellness. That is very, very important for our mission, our police department. And so such things is called a human terrain mapping and students learn about such concepts, concepts as advanced critical thinking, decision-making algorithm, biases, and the six layers of human behavior. It's a real intense, very good program, very good training program. And then lastly, we've also added the Northwest School of Police and Command. We do need our command levels to attend excellent training, additional training, myself or Lieutenant LeClaire, or if one of these proposed commanders, this is a two and a half month course on development for management. That's so all I have on training. And then I will have Lieutenant LeClaire address the flux safety cameras if you want to start with that. Sure. Uh, you got uh, about six pages. Um, I'll just give it to you in a nutshell. Um, block safety cameras are automated uh, license plate reader cameras. Um, neighboring jurisdictions have already started purchasing these. And you strategically place them uh, in high traffic areas. Uh, what these cameras do is they capture license plates and vehicle data of every vehicle that travels in this area, in the area that they're placed. Uh, the goal is uh, to start off with four cameras. Um, like I said, this brochure will give you a little bit about privacy matters. Um, they're all addressed in there. Uh, what these cameras allow is basically unbiased information. Uh, it's all vehicle based. Um, it's license plates, it's models of cars, it's uh, Certain colors of our bumper stickers. Uh, there's parameters that you can set um, into this system, and it will help you in your, your investigations. It, it helps a lot. We we already have some access to the other agencies' cameras, the data that help us with crimes. Um, when we add ours, they'll help us with investigations immensely. Um, quick example. Uh, recent homicide we had here. Um, one of the cameras we would strategically place in an area where that occurred, uh, had those been in place, uh, it would have been very helpful um, <coughs> locating the vehicle um, that was responsible. Um, ultimately, we did find that, but it, it took a lot longer than if we had this system. Um, another benefit of this is real-time alerts. <coughs> Every plate that's read by this system, it's, it's then run through a database to compare um, uh, wanted or um, alerts, a stolen vehicle, the stolen vehicle's license plate is read. Uh, officers on patrol will receive that alert saying this vehicle was spotted in this area. Um, 
then it's up to the officer to respond to that area and investigate further. Um, you can't just rely on, on a camera giving you an alert this Carter. Obviously, the officer has to do his own investigation, but extremely helpful. It's, it's well known in the police world that crimes such as uh, car break ins, um, retail uh, run out thefts, are perpetrated by people in stolen vehicles. Um, they go and commit crimes in stolen vehicles. So if we're getting alerts um, that these vehicles are in the area, we can kind of tailor our patrol to, to head that way and at least investigate, maybe deter. Okay, so that these cameras are very helpful in that way. Uh, also use uh, in missing uh, person cases that the vehicles involved, um, they can be very helpful. If not, if it didn't originate here, at least in another jurisdiction, they have access to our information from these cameras. So that's it in a nutshell. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to. As you can see with the quad camera, please take a look at the privacy things that matters. Okay, that is that's a question that comes up that may come up with this. Um, we own the data, the police department owns the data. Okay. And a couple of key points, it's not used for traffic enforcement. There's not facial recognition software. It just captures the rear of the vehicle. So there's no personally identifiable, identifiable information in regards to the driver. So it's just the vehicle that will help as part of this crime prevention, as Lieutenant McClure explained. And there's a 30 day retention period. After that, the data will be released. What database is it going to be on? It's going to be on, my understanding, talking to Flock representative, an Amazon based internet search uh, matter. I understand that yeah. the database and data is from the yeah. Where are they getting their data from? It's, it's coming from, from they've got agreement with Regis. Okay, the hot files are Regis. So they have to work out the agreements with Regis, which is our software, you know, our database, Singles database, regional justice information system that we use. Well, they're, they're, they're good at certain things and not good at other things, so. Yes, it's part of that. That was the internet providers. This is, Regis is the maintain of all the criminal justice records in the St. Louis region. We are looking at four to five cameras, and we haven't determined the locations that we would look at that for strategically placed locations. That traffic area. Yes. Yes. So I just want to clarify: it says no traffic. Um, so I just want to confirm: it's not going to, you know, pull up like someone has expired tags, and you're going to issue them a ticket. No, it's. it's Can you do that with it? I'm sorry. Can you do that with it? Not to my knowledge, you cannot. It will not. It will not let us know that uh, someone's vehicle traveling through and it has expired tags. It will not be an alert for that. The alerts would be anything a vehicle has wanted or entered in the, the database, the Regis database, for a stolen vehicle or if there's any other ones to that. And it also helps for amber alerts, a silver advisory, and you know all that matter. Yeah, it's not connected to DMV records. Yeah. So it, was, it wouldn't even come up if it, if it was expired or not. But if you could read it and you could access DMV records. Yes, but you're talking about capturing hundreds of plates within seconds. Gotcha. Yes. Um, so you're not setting up alerts that, you know. So, so those alerts will say, you put the camera on camera. If you fence in with it, is it aware of kind of position alert? Yes. To answer your question, one part of that is yes, it can be shared with other agencies. If we allow us our cameras, these cameras to share with other agencies, neighboring agencies. 
but let's say we we had an incident um we could show the agency and we just had a a yellow vehicle uh partial plate of this if we had that sharing access these agency had our sharing access they could get that information as well so if it enters their jurisdiction that will alert the officers there's a car rule by involved in crime somehow flag you get diverted it moves out of our jurisdiction yeah and and, and yeah and if, if you remember that we do share frequencies with surrounding agencies too um officers scan put their radio on scan so we directly share with four agencies webster shrewsbury um not richmond heights but what, uh, rock hill rock hill but 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 richmond heights is on the other channel so they do scan so they hear those so if we were to get if our dispatcher or we were to get an alert say hey this stolen vehicle is going south on hamley the other agencies are hearing that over the radio i guess so there there's kind of the sharing part of it i guess and council member Buckingham, just to be clear we also have to build probable cause and reasonable suspicion right yeah it's also a deterrent matter so if that alerts also at least there would be a patrol car that could go in the area and possibly deter any matters of that gotcha. they're just automatically not going to pull over that vehicle there's other parameters we okay. have to establish yeah like you would mention a lot of people Yeah, and overnight when there's a, a vehicle break-ins, if that hits the camera, at least we got some officer presence in that area and hopefully deter any incidents of that matter. Are we going to amplify that? Uh, something I have to discuss with the city manager. Yeah. 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 There's press releases available. Do you, you have a view on it? It's not. It's not something that I was. No. Yeah. Not really. Not really. Right. It's not really something that that came across my mind to be honest with you. Yeah. If you've never heard of it before, then I would imagine other agencies don't, because, like I said, they're already in place. Right. There's agencies that have them already. So. Yeah. I just remember we tried to have somebody go get them for one of the cars. We did have that system on the car for a while. Yes, for our, yes exactly. Good. So all the officers would have access to the database all the license plates that are collected and from other agencies as well. Um, this That is for an officer cannot put in a license plate, his, uh, his son's girlfriend or, or his girlfriend or his girlfriend's friend or whatever. There has to be a specified reason why you are looking for this plate or looking for this type of vehicle. So most likely you would associate with a, a documented police report. That's the reason for that. And Council Member, we can also narrow this down by time. So if we're having some vehicle break-ins and we've identified a vehicle as a uh, silver, whatever sedan, whatever make and model, and we see that a lot of our incidents are occurring at two o'clock in the morning, we can set those cameras from midnight to three in the morning for that particular vehicle. <clears throat> so we can, and that's another audit trail that would be there, and we have to put in a reason what the reason that would be in there for audit purposes. Yeah. Um, just two quick questions. You had mentioned other um, neighboring municipalities already have these. Um, so can you, I mean, would you share who has them? So we kind of have an idea. Yeah. Brentwood currently has uh, several and Clayton. Clayton. And this is a neighboring state as well, all the way into the West Coast. That are using this camera system. 
My second question is um, if the initial cost is 18,000, what's the annual? <clears throat> Good question, roughly the same, it'll be roughly the same. It's like a, a lease, okay? Um, it, it, roughly $2,500 per year per camera. Uh, the initial cost for this, if we got five cameras, is if they have to, if we decide to put on a Manchester's a state highway here still, or if there's a county road, there's permits in that with that that we have to absorb initially, or if we have to use a utility pole or what have you for hammer new stuff of that nature. That's where the additional cost, but after that is a $2,500 per camera per year. The original charge you see is very, very confusing, and there's just too much going on. This narrows the scope down and, and really would assist this agency in moving forward. Any more questions as it relates to the reorganization, the building bridges program, training, or the cameras? Um, regarding training, um, is there, I know in your, somewhere, all of your training is listed, but for the community, um, how do we make that as transparent as possible of what training you guys are getting and what you're implementing on an annual basis? That's a good question. That's something I would, you know, work with uh, Michael on and Laura and, and promoting that, you know, different training. Every, every training is, is inputted in our own internal database. And if it's a post-certified class, not everything is post-certified. There's a lot of in-house training, which we do have some of this post-certified. That's a Missouri police officer's paradise training. All of those records are kept for the state of Missouri, a post-certified course. So I can pull up Lieutenant McClure and they're giving all of his training courses for the year. So the best way to promote this to the public is just, you know, through our social media and on our website. Uh, Laura Miller and I have been working on Lieutenant McClure on developing our website. Slowly we're adding more and more what, what we do. You know, um, you'll see our statistics out there now. So we're working on that. That's another possibility of different training courses we're doing for the month or week or what have you. It's okay with council. We can go to item number five and turn it over to our finance director to talk some numbers and some other things, if that's okay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, I'm going to start here on the summary page. As you can see, um, just like we did with the fire department, we have combined um, all of the police expense in the Prop P budget. Um, rather than having two separate budgets, budgets to try to manage, it makes more sense to have all of the police expense in the prop, uh, Proposition P um, account. So that's where all the expenses are this year. So it's a little bit different. Um, we have. Oh, why is it showing it? I'm sorry. Let me try this. There it is. Okay, sorry. There you go. So um, everything is in the is in this Prop P budget. So there won't be two separate budgets this year. Um, we have, as you can see, there's um, an increase in. Let me scroll down. It's a little bit there. You go. Um, there is an increase in overall salaries. Um, part of that is we have the step increases that we have as part of our, our hiring staff. And so some um, officers are going to be in that step increase, as well as um, we're, you know, in that major position. So that's going to be a different salary rate. So there's going to be a little bit of adjustment there. Um, and as you can see um, below, um, well, okay. um, there's been an increase in materials and supplies um, about, of about 30,000. But then under other services and charges, that's gone down almost, well, almost eighty thousand um, dollars. And then the capital outlay is going to be just a little bit less than it is this year, about four thousand dollars less than the current year. Um, in regards to the personnel, as you can see, there is the major position that's been added, which is the assistant chief. 
but it does not change the total number of staff for the department. So <clears throat> um, again, with salaries, we do not know our insurance rates yet, and there is no um, cost of living or uh, uh, cost of living or a merit increase or anything like that. Um, after we get the revenues, projected revenues for next year at the consolidated budget in May 10th is when uh, the city manager will recommend any sort of a COLA merit increase. And by then we should hopefully have at least an estimate for what our insurance rates are gonna go up for next year. We just, they don't know yet, it's too far out. Um, so these numbers may change slightly and that would be presented, any changes would be presented at the consolidated budget meeting on May 10th. Um, so this just lists all the officers. And as you can see, there are extra officers in here that weren't in here last year because they were in the somewhere in general, somewhere in Prop P. Um, and I did wanna bring two things to your attention. Um, we have the major position budgeted as well as the chief of police position, which is vacant. So both of those positions are vacant. Um, and then we have a corporal position here. And that's because we have one sergeant position that's going to be eliminated and they're going to add a corporal position. So we're going to switch the sergeant to a corporal. So we didn't budget anything on the corporal line because I don't know exactly when that's going to happen. I'd rather budget for the sergeant all year until we know exactly when we're going to get that corporal. In. So um, it's not changing actual numbers. It's just we didn't want to budget double budget for it. Otherwise, the budget would have been really a lot higher and, and out of out of whack. Um, let's see. Um, and that is pretty much everything that we have so far. Like I said, the cost of living and merit. There is nothing in there at this time, um, and that's pretty much all of the salaries for fiscal um, year 2022 2023. Are there any questions about the salaries in particular? I had a, I had a mechanics question um, in switching to this system of doing it all together, which I like, it makes mm -hmm. sense. So my understanding is you would use Prop P money first. Yes. Will you use it all or is there a certain amount that you leave in reserve? Um, <laughs> I would think, it, I mean, we'd have to look at it and just kind of, it kind of depends on how the numbers play out. I would assume that we would use all, most if not all of the Prop P money. Um, the, obviously we do want to have some Prop P money that is in reserve to purchase items like vehicles, body cameras, ballistic vests, things like that that are their ongoing capital. But we also don't need to have a giant fund balance in Prop P for, and, and, and not use all of those funds because we are just growing a fund balance so we don't have a particular reason for a purchase. So we would use most of the prop fee meaning, I would assume, but not all. And it will really depend when we look at the numbers and see how everything, how everything goes, shakes out, as well as in consultation with the chief, uh, acting chief of police to make sure that there aren't any major items that we aren't aware, that I'm not aware of, especially, that they're trying to kind of save money for. So like, for example, like the police department renovation, that would have been something that they would have saved some money, set some money aside for, and they wouldn't want to use all of their money if they're trying to build that reserve to be able to do that work. But obviously we're using some of that reserve to do that work now. So there'd be something along those lines. Okay. I guess my other question is if I, like council member Falkingham, find this organizational chart much more pleasing and it looks nice, but it seems like it comes with a little bit of a cost, right? Because you're increase, you're adding a very high up position. And I guess I'm just looking at the fact that how do we plan? Because when you're adding salaries, that's something that goes up every year, right? Regardless. So our Prop P money is pretty, you know, seems to be around the same every year. And if that's not really increasing, it seems like then the, the cost comes to the general fund budget. So I'm just curious, like, do we feel that we have projected, like our projections are good enough that we'll be able to support this increase without having to take more from the general fund? Okay, so um, I've kind of looked at the Prop P funding and I know, I mean, obviously COVID is a really hard year to kind of determine how that's worked. But in other municipalities where I've worked with, they've also had Prop P money. I've kind of, I mean, used some of that information as well. It's, it is part of the countywide pool so it, it kind of, um, it's, so it's based on countywide sales taxes. Those tend to go up steadily every year. Um, do they always go up as much as maybe salaries will? Maybe not, but they do, they do tend to go up. I, I mean, we're anticipating this year, um, 
being up from last year, probably around thirty to forty thousand dollars in revenues. So, uh, or yeah, thirty to forty thousand dollars. So, um, it is it's a significant increase. Now that may eventually level off, and at that time, that might be something that we'd have to look at tightening the belt somewhere else in order to be able to achieve that. But um, I think at least for the not too distant future, I, I don't think that that's an issue for. Um, the prop P to be able to absorb some of those increased costs with the reorganization. You're welcome. If there's no other questions about salaries, I can move on to just the accounts. Just real quick on the holiday pay, why that's gone up so much year over year. Why that's gone up so much year over year. Um, the holiday pay is based on, it takes everybody's salary, so it's based on what you earn. And so adding the additional higher yes. salaries adds that. Okay, exactly. thank you. <clears throat> okay, so if we go to the top here, the first section is the personnel services. So that's just the summary, or it's just the actual account line item for all of the salaries. Um, and so, um, as you mentioned, the holiday pay did go up, and that was one of the items I was going to mention because that happens with um, the salary raises. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, um, the other thing, again, is that the insurance cost, we don't know what that's going to be yet. It's not going to go down. It's only going to go up. It's just a matter of how much, and we'll address that, as I said before, at the May 10th meeting. Um, let's see. Here. So then when we get into the materials and supplies section, there are a couple of items that I want to bring your attention to. The first one would be gas, oil, and etc. Gas, oil, etc. It's account number 50050. Um, again, with gas prices, we don't know exactly what they are going to be. We're budgeting a $25,000 increase for fiscal year 2022, 2023. Um, if that, if we think that's going to change either going up or if we might be able to reduce that some, depending on what happens with these, these talk negotiations, whatever is going on today, um, then we will adjust that again at the May 10th meeting. But we wanted to make sure we had something in there in case this situation continued and gas prices continue to skyrocket. So. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Yes, they have. So, I mean, it, it's looking good, but we, when we prepared this, we wanted to make sure that, that we didn't shortchange it and that the gentlemen were able, or the officers were able to get out and patrol the streets because uh, they drive all day. <laughs> um, the only other real change, and it, it's a very slight change on general supplies, it's going up just a little bit, and that's just the general um, cost of expense of so everything just kind of goes up a little bit. Otherwise, they're trying to hold tight on their office supplies and everything else is staying steady from the prior year. Are there any questions about the materials and supplies? So council member, thank you. I think you and I talked about this and we do plan on having it. I've had discussions with our staff, our directors about um, uh, based on your interests and others that have come to me that we wanna do it this fall. Um, we haven't established a date yet, but we will soon. In fact, it's, I just, it's, it's on my agenda tomorrow to talk about the, you know, and, 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 and are we gonna do it the same as two, two or three years ago or might we tweak it a little bit? But we do plan on doing it. I can let you know as it gets closer when, when we're going to, um, when that's going to be and how it's going to be organized this year. But obviously, we want to let the community know about it in advance as soon as we can. And um, uh, I wasn't aware of a budget impact associated with that. Maybe, maybe others know. I, I didn't. I didn't think it had a budget impact associated with that. So, you know, I don't know what you mean, but it's going to be under the top. It's just, yeah, it's right here. The community relations supplies the various flyers, handouts, supplies for okay. community activities, citizens, again. 
it's material preparation for that in, in culmination. Um, as Council Member Schmidt, I, I, those community resource packets that we have and the domestic assault packets that all the offers provide, that's part of the cost associated, including the Citizens Academy, any material that we can hand out or present. Thank you. Yeah, so let's talk um, over time, right? So in uh, 1819, it was about 35,000. We're now looking at a budget of uh, 92,000. Um, that's almost an entire staff person. So at what point do we say we need less overtime and an additional staff person? Um, okay. So basically, again, overtime is based on salary. So it depends on who's actually going to be working. So that's always going to increase. Um, and I think part of the part of the situation is in in when when they want to have certain activities that occur. Um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm if I'm speaking. But when they want to have certain activities occur and they have officers present at some of these events that aren't actually going to have to leave to go to a call, there would be overtime associated with that. And I think that that's part of the, the department's dedication to make sure that they have staff present at a lot of the different events that happen in the city. But if you want, if, if I'm missing something, sure. if I'm speaking, well, we increase our training also. There's associated costs with overtime on that. We also prepare our overtime budget because in the past there's been some civil unrest uh, that we've had to dedicate officers for weeks at a time in multiple hours. I can just let you know, like for this year, uh, we've been fortunate with our overtime costs that we've only spent, um, we have 58% of our overtime budget remaining. But we are cautious about that too. And we try everything we can to keep those costs down, but we do have 58% remaining as of uh, the end of March year. From last year. Okay, if everybody's okay, I was going to move on to the other services and charges section. Um, this session, this section, there are some significant changes. Um, and so I'm going to kind of um, point out a few of those. The first one would be the advertising account, which is 60010. So, very first account in this section. Um, as you can see, we budgeted 500 for this year, and we're budgeting 1500 for next year. Um, the reasoning for that is publishing in the St. Louis American is very expensive, and especially when we're trying to get a more diverse uh, candidate pool, we really want to be able to advertise in the St. Louis American. Um, so we did budget specifically budget extra money for that purpose, just because it, it is a, a more expensive uh, publication, but it, it, it's worth it, I think, the money. So. Um, excuse me. Um, so that was that was the main reason for that increase. Um, the next item that we have is under care and sustenance. Um, it's account number six zero zero eight zero. That's going to excuse me. That's going up about four hundred dollars. And that's um, the T-shirts for the regional um, night out. The region was it the regional night out? out. Thank you. Um, but just part of the community relations stuff. So. Um, they do have that budgeted for this year, 2022, 2023. Um, everything else, um, the one thing I do want to mention is the ECDC dispatching, which is East Central Dispatching. Um, again, that may change. We are still waiting to find out what that final number is going to be because of other entities dropping out. So once we get that number, that might change a little bit at the May 10th meeting. So I'll be sure to point that out if there are any changes there. Um, Everything else is pretty much the same budget as last year, where the departments really worked hard to try to keep their budget, to not increase their budget if they can avoid it, and to try to cut where they can. Um, one of the items where there has been um, a significant cut is um, under professional services. We budgeted $29,295 this year. This year, 2022-23, they're only budgeting $1,500. That is because of the consulting firm for the police, uh, by our police chief. Uh, process. So that cost will go away. Um, um, also, uh, there, there was a, a code red notification system that was in that part of that line. And that has been removed also because that's all being handled over in the police over in the fire department. So the police department is no longer sharing them. Um, there is a also a significant 
decrease in the Regis charges, which is in IT services. That is because we put using Regis for not just the police data, but also all of our IT services. Now that we use Go IMET, um, we are actually getting better results at a, at a much cheaper cost. So we were able to reduce those costs um, within the police department budget significantly. Excuse me. Um, I'm sorry, my allergies are really bad. So I'm really trying not to sound or cough at y'all. Um, okay. So the next item that I wanted to bring up is um, training, which is account number 60540. And um, that has gone up to $30,950. Um, part of that is it, there's been an added $4,400, which was for the Northwestern School of Police Staff and Command, which is the leadership development. Um, and so it'll either be, and, and that's kind of what they're planning on doing. Um, they may have somebody that it might switch out to be like the FBI Academy if, if, if that's something that they need to pursue instead, but they're going to try to limit that additional training expense to that $4,400. Um, and that's to cover all the training that um, Acting Chief Niber had already mentioned earlier. And then <clears throat> finally, the other big change that we have here in this section is under account number 60960, sorry, um, we budgeted $20,000 for care um, and that is going down to zero. Uh, previously, officers used to call in their police reports to the system and it would type up the report. Um, the officers now just type their own report, so there's no need to continue to have that, that system and pay for that system that the officers are able to do that themselves, so. <coughs> sorry. Are there any questions about any of those changes? <laughs> uh, we, we've evaluated the cost of that. It's going down each year. So, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not three <laughs> um, Okay. And then the last section is capital outlay. And we are still budgeting $252,000 for capital outlay expenditures. Um, and I'm going to jump to the capital outlay tab here because it gives more of the detail of what's going to happen. Um, again, the department is still budgeting um, $108,000 for the three police vehicles to do the police vehicle rotation um, that they do every year. And that's just to make sure that they have enough or that they're able to do a continual rotation of their vehicles and not have really outdated vehicles. Um, there is $2,500 that is budgeted for the athletic net, NATS for defensive tactics training. And that's going in the new, the new renovation area. Yes, craft. Cool. It's going to be in the old firehouse renovation area. It's going to be um, a tactic training spot. Um, then there is uh, a 5,000 or five bulletproof vests for $7,000. Um, and that's, that's just part of the continual rotation again. Um, it's just better to do it on a on an annual basis. Um, there is eighteen thousand dollars budgeted for the flat camera system, and I know that she, Acting Chief Nybrand mentioned that it was twenty five hundred dollars per view, per camera, but there will be some additional um, costs for having them installed in certain places, and so that's why there's that eighteen thousand, and that's the cap that they're planning on spending. So they're working to try to to they think that that should cover any additional costs for placement of the cameras. <laughs> Um, again, the police department has the same issue that the fire department has with the radios that they are no longer under warranty and they do not, um, they're no longer under warranty and so they're not really repairable. So they are budgeting for two portable radios for their patrol. Um, and right now they're budgeting $11,000 for those two radios. They are working with some addition, with some, um, other departments to try to get some, and with Motorola trying to get some better pricing, like in the kind of like a group purchase um, to try to get that because everybody needs to replace their, their radios. We're, it, we're, we're not unique in that situation. So they are trying to figure out a way to try to get some um, economies of scale when it comes to getting those, those radios replaced without having to buy all of them in one year. Um, the one other thing that I did want to point out, there was a change. Um, the off the I talked with Acting Chief Niver and um, Lieutenant LeClaire, and 
I think in the one that was sent out to council, it said, I think it said two and then in parentheses three, um, Colt AR-15 rifles, and then an estimated cost of 4,000, but then an actual cost of like 5,000. Um, it, but they were debating back and forth whether they should do two or three um, because of expenses that are already within the budget. They decided to just go with the two for fiscal year 2023. So it will be $4,000. So I didn't make that correction in here. Um, and it will be corrected. Yeah. I'm sorry? Why do we need oh, do we have those already? Yes, we do. What do we, we, only have, we currently have six that are in there. We have nine patrol vehicles. And then when our officers have training, there goes four of those leaving us down to two. So it's just additional for that purpose for all to equip all the vehicles, especially for training purposes when they're out of, out of service. What will we use one of those for? Uh, well, to for incidents you know around the country, there is, for lack of a better term, there is heavier firepower than than our handguns can handle. Yes, it is a last resort item, but exactly why so our handguns or pagers can't handle every single incident that comes down to legal force in that way okay um the next item is um five thousand dollars for the copier scanner for the police clerk um the police clerk clerk scans and it's every report every document every document report. that for the police department um, and then apparently it's a very, very old scanner. I didn't know what it was, but I heard it making noises when I first started, <laughs> figured out what it was. Um, and so it is very old. It kind of makes this weird squeal sound every time it takes a page in or shoves a page through. So um, the Go INET has recommended that the police department budget to replace that for next fiscal year. Um, they also have $5,000 for um, computers, um, which is just part of that rotation that they need to have so that way they don't have the really old computers should if they don't need them obviously they wouldn't if, if all their computers are good they wouldn't spend that but it that's what the go i net recommends that they budget for the next fiscal year and then the last item is the big item which is renovations for the old fire department um, and the police department locker rooms downstairs so um we are i believe and I, I've spoken with Anthony on this as well, um, that this should be the end to try to finish up the renovations, both with the old firehouse area, as well as the police area downstairs. Correct. The locker rooms are essential for our officers. We all have one changing area at this point, which is not sufficient for our agency. So that, that is a goal of that. And to read it and refurbish the downstairs and add some more office space for our officers. Right now, the officers have to type in their reports in the midst of a room that's a multi-purpose room, so we want to add some offices downstairs. And so that is the total of their budget. Are there any other, are there any questions about any of the capital or anything else? A couple of quick questions. Uh, the, the radios, is that two and done or is that gonna be like next year we need another two kind of like the other stuff we gotta rotate them out every year gotcha mm -hmm. and then um oh, th that's a purchase of a copier scanner or leasing that would be a purchase okay is that what we do with all our departments we buy that equipment i we lease like the big copier but this is like a it's a special copy a special scanner that it only works with like the regis equipment that's why we would purchase it Um, I just have a question related to the vehicles. Are, as we're purchasing new vehicles, are we exclusively purchasing SUVs or are we still getting sedans? The sedans are not, no longer made by Ford. So it is SUVs at this time. And that's what most police vehicles around the country will be going to. It's the SUVs, whether it's the Dodge, the Chevy Tahoe, the Dodge Durango, or the Ford Explorers. Uh, sedans are the end no longer made for police vehicle packages. So. That's a shame. I noticed at Missouri State Highway Patrol, I mean, most of theirs now are all SUVs. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go, they don't, I rarely see a patrol car anymore. 
I mean, it, it's clearly an issue for um, fuel efficiency, but also pedestrian safety. So I just, I just have issues with SUVs personally. So. I had a question about the information at the very end, like the metrics. Are we there or should I wait? Um, the, yeah, the performance metrics, yeah. those have not been updated yet. That's part of the budget book item. And so it will be in the budget book when the budget book is presented. So and, um, will all the lines be filled in? Because it looks like just the one line is always filled in, but there's four up, three other lines for like- With the reports incident. filed, the police yeah. complaints fielded and the CAD incident. That is my goal, yes, to 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 start yes, count, to yes to get those metrics. And then I, I know I noticed I'd asked last year, but you know lots changed. But is it possible to add calls to service to that too? Call that, to service, yeah. Um, okay, the first file the rest. Yeah, I guess that would be different than getting yeah, some. Okay, yeah, we can add that. I don't. I mean, I don't see that there's a problem. Is there any reason why you wanted to see that being a problem? No, that's not a problem. The cat incidents or roughly standards calls for service, correct? Yeah. But you don't always have that. Oh, it's minus administration calls. Right. Yeah, that's something I can work yeah. with Lexi yeah. on. Yeah. And maybe it makes more sense to have calls for service rather than cat incidents. Yes. But, but we, we will make sure that we address that. No problem. That is all I have. If y'all don't have any more questions. Good. All right. May I have a motion to adjourn? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you all.